Welcome to Entreprogrammers Podcast, the podcast for developpreneurs, with your hosts, Josh Uro, Derek Bailey, and John Sonmez. The podcast where you get to be a fly on the wall listening to real conversations of three developers trying to tackle the challenges they face as entrepreneurs. Hey, Josh Earl here with a quick message from our sponsor, Signal Leaf. Look, doing a podcast is a lot of work. The last thing you need is a podcast hosting service that makes you jump through a bunch of hoops just to get your episodes published. My co host, Derek, created Signal Leaf with one goal in mind to build the easiest podcast hosting service out there. It's the simplest way to get your new podcast up and running quickly and without any hassle. If you're thinking of starting your own podcast, just use Signal Leaf. Then you can get back to polishing the lyrics for your own official podcast rap song. We're on the air, on the on the private airwaves. The <laughs> we're, private airwaves. We're being recorded. Yes. So uh, yeah, welcome, welcome to the. Uh, the the triumvite which is now the quadumvite so we're gonna have to we might, we're gonna have to talk about uh, whether we redo our intro and outro right right yeah we got to rebrand ourselves now because we got to have four <laughs> floating heads that's right so, and, so oh, I, I, I guess to to make it official welcome Charles or Chuck or whatever you want to be called because you're now officially part of the entreprogrammers yeah you can just call me that guy from Utah. John was in Idaho previously. Let's yeah. Go. All right. Somewhere out west. Yes. But, but yeah. At the east of the Mississippi, it's all the same, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to figure it out because our, our jingle at the end, too, we'll have to. Uh, yeah. We, unfortunately, we won't be able to get the 10 second song guy to do it again. Yeah, I know. Because he's now like a big shot famous like celebrity now he's got like a million youtube followers now wow like, that's so funny like he's yeah yeah we might want to just that one we might want to just keep as it is, it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of a it's priceless it's priceless as it is so. you know what we should do though we should we should have one of us go in there and just record and charles yeah <laughs> right in the middle of it <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out but uh yeah, yeah. And we also now have to get. Um, we'll have to figure out also with editing. I don't want to like uh, like I don't know if David's going to be able to continue editing. I, yeah. I haven't heard from him for a couple of weeks. I guess he was he's he's been uh, he, he's been ill. So uh, so yeah. So we'll have to figure that out. I, I produced the last two episodes, right. which was uh, it was a little bit more of a pain than I thought. And I realized that he wasn't um, <laughs> tagging the MP3s. Right. So like or putting in the image files or anything. Yeah, so there's still like more work that could be could be done to to produce it as right. well, but I mean it's not. A, a if super we end up getting any sponsors though, which we've we've reached out to to three companies now, so if we end up with any of them, then that would more than pay for uh, uh, like dev reps or or someone else to take over and have an actual team to do the editing. Yeah. Yep. So. So yeah, so we'll figure it out. For now, I'll probably just count on doing this episode, and then uh, and right. then probably in the next week or so we can we can figure something out. I'll I'll reach out to David and see what's going on, and then we can see if we can and hopefully if we hear back from sponsors. So, right. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I haven't heard anything back yet. So how's uh how's everyone's week? How's it how's it going? We it hasn't been that long since we. It hasn't been that long. <laughs> no, we're recording on Wednesday because I'm going to be out of town on Friday and. This happened to be the the best time that worked out for all of us. Yep. So, um, yeah, I don't. I guess I don't have a whole lot to say. I'm I'm I've been working on um, my Node Vember talks, which is coming up this weekend. Um, I've it's going to be a pretty dang good talk, I think. I'm I'm uh, doing a talk on building your own uh, development environment for um, Node.js, which is really applicable to a lot more than just Node.js. It could be, you know, most any language these days, um, maybe with the exceptions of things like Java and C Sharp, which really do need IDEs because yeah. of the complexity of the frameworks, not the language itself. Uh, but but it's going to be a fun talk because I'm, I've got a ton of my hand-drawn images in there, and it's uh, showing off some really good tools, uh, a lot of things that I do day-to-day, -day, and it, it all ties back to watch me code as well. So I've got this nice big discount code on my final slide, you know, for November attendees to be able to get a, a watch me code subscription, which hopefully will generate a few subscriptions out of that. 
I've been I've been getting I've been seeing a a fair number of new subscriptions this week. I've had three or four new subscriptions a day, but Whoa, I don't nice. seem to be losing that many every day. So I'm <laughs> I'm still stuck right at three twenty six for for subscribers, which is kind of driving me nuts. Are they are they canceling or just um? What's, what's some of them are canceling. Some of them are expiring, um, which is basically PayPal's way of canceling. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them are are people's credit cards expiring, so the their payment method fails and their account expires, and they just never renew it. Um, and I've had a few people say, "Oh crap, my card expired. Can I get that you know previous plan again?" And of course, okay. I'm hooking them up with that whenever they they ask because I want to keep them around. But Most yeah. prop people probably won't even realize. <laughs> yeah, when their card expires. You yeah. have a system that emails them when their card expires or whatever, or if the payment. It, fails. it emails them when their payment fails. So if the if their mm-hmm. card expired, their payment will fail, and they'll get an email. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really thinking that. I mean, it's still maybe a little too early to tell, but I I'm just from what you're describing, I'm really convinced at this point. That if you start offering the the year plans where you where it's a discounted rate and you're paying for a year, that you're going to see a a a increase in in cash flow just simply because if people if these people are expiring like the, the same people that that are canceling might have been willing to sign up for a six month or for a year and, right. and paid you that money up front. And then, you know, especially if they're getting a discount, um, so that you, you, your net lifetime revenue will be higher, I think, per customer if you, if you implement that plan. Of course, you know, the commitment issues and, and whatnot we talked about. But yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about all that before. And, and on top of that, every screencaster that I've talked to that has done yearly subscriptions before has said don't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what do they know? <laughs> yeah, you know what? A, don't listen to the people that have done it and and have had bad experiences. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. You gotta you gotta blaze your own trail based on your. I mean, you gotta look at your data primarily, and then you know take what other people say. You know, but I don't know. It, it's 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 something to think about, or to at least like maybe like like uh, try to run some numbers and see what what do you think it would would result in but yeah and Derek you're seeing I'm still about... wanting to do the the whole launch deal that we talked about last week with with the the uh, Mongoose JS series cuz it's turning into a really good series I've got yeah. like I'm I'm going to end up having like 10 episodes if you count the three free installing MongoDB episodes so it'll be a, a really nice package to be able to, to sell, and I'm I'm putting together thoughts in my head, and I need to start writing them down in an actual launch sequence. Yeah. So one other thing I want to ask really quickly um, is, are you reaching out to the people who are canceling? Oh, good question. Um, only through the generic canned email so far. Yeah, I I would try reaching out to some of them and just saying, hey, look. You know, this is what I'm trying to accomplish with Watch Me Code. Apparently, you know, it's not lining up for you, and I'm wondering what I can do better. Um, a lot of people will respond to that, and if they don't, you really have nothing to lose because if they're canceling, actively canceling, they're not coming back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I do get a fair amount of response. I think probably in the range of 20 to 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 30% response from that canned email that that sends out when they exp- expire or cancel and the the number one reason that people uh, cite when they respond to that is i'm just trying to get my expenses under control i have too many subscriptions going on right now which ultimately what that really means is your service doesn't provide enough value to justify right. the cost. Right? Well, but it also I mean that again that that points me towards that whole like maybe they would have signed up for a year like mm-hmm. so, so for some like Dropbox is this really well in Evernote, right? Because I pay for the premium of both of those and yes, I guarantee but you up to if, you to use the service Dropbox well, is not generating content for you. Right, but but I guarantee you if they were monthly charges instead of instead of of the year up front that I would have dropped uh, probably both of them by now because I would have said ah I, d- I don't like these monthly right. you know I don't know it's just a, it's a mental thing like I got a discount I don't have to worry about it for a year I, I don't know that's just I could be yeah. wrong but no that's that's a fair point it's 
It's all the old arguments, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was going to ask a question. So, are you? Um, have you considered um, the third? The, the you, we've talked about the three months idea too, right? Is that still too much commitment? Um, too far out. And would it help because you have a now an idea of what your churn rate is? Three months might not really help all that much. Yeah, I actually don't know what my churn rate is right now. I don't have. I I, don't, I need to to either do some analytics myself out of the database or sign up for uh, bare metrics for Watch Me Code again. Because if yeah. your average is three months, but you've got you know people who are signing up for one month and people who are signing up for nine, right? Then you might get some benefit out of offering three months and getting more of those one-month people mm -hmm. right. locked in for a bigger chunk up front. But yeah, that's a good question. I'd, I'd have to look into that. The other so thing I was, things I need to do. The other thing I was going to ask is, like, when you, so when you go to plan your next... Um, well, so I, I ended up not doing this because I kind of... I sort of bailed on my, my Sublime, Sublime products going forward, but... Um, I, that survey that I did was really, really eye-opening. And before you start planning your next, your next um, sequence or you know series of videos, it might be a good mm -hmm. idea to hit your audience with a short survey and see what they're most interested in. Because there were some things on there I would not have guessed. Right. And if you really, if you're really able to hit something that people really want, then you might get more traction out of a little mini launch with them. True. Good idea. But time. <laughs> yes, time. <laughs> Isn't that always the issue? Always okay. time. Yep. <clears throat> so, so do I take the time to record? Do I, do I take the time to do a survey to see what videos I need to record? Or do I actually record and get videos done and have them delivered on time? <laughs> and this is where this is where I think that lesson that we learned last week on with make is valuable is both, but don't do the survey yeah. yourself. Hire someone right. to mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah, there you go. It's a good point. Because that's yep. yeah, yeah. I mean the search mine yeah mine probably to I yeah it probably took me maybe like five hours maybe something like that four or five hours total between the email setting the survey up myself um, and then kind of crunching the data. Which just really amounted to me reading it multiple times and right. So I will meaning. along that line. I'll probably reach out to Momoko again because she mm -hmm. did a great job with there this you go. survey. Yeah. There you go. Let's yeah. see if she can help me out with this. Mm -hmm. One one thing you may want to do there is uh, have um, her or somebody else uh, go out and actually find you a handful of surveys. Right. And then you can kind of pick and choose the things you like about them. Mm. Yeah. So say, look, go spend an hour, go find surveys. I know that uh, Michael Hyatt has a listener survey. I know that a few other folks have them, you know, for their podcasts. And I'm right. assuming since it's content, it's going to be somewhat similar. And then you can yeah. figure out from there. Okay. I don't really need all the questions about that are specific to his audience, but all of these demographic questions are interesting. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Stuff like that. Right. That's a good idea. And then really, you know, ask the questions that lead to what problems do you have? Yep. What are you struggling with? What what would help you get the next job? Blah, 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 blah. Right. right. <clears throat> so on, on, a, on a more positive note on that end, um, I've been getting a little bit of um, uh, visibility, I guess is the right word, from the actual, from the Mongoose.js team. Because I keep tweeting, okay. it's it's been like six or five or six weeks in a row now that I've had a mongoose episode, and I, I tweet at the mongoose team multiple times a, a week with the episodes that I'm releasing, and they've started retweeting the actual episode releases. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, if you can yeah, get it on great. their site for like a resources, that'd be pretty cool too. That'd be pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. I I did that with Selenium, like with my um, I didn't expect them to do it, but my Pluralsight course on Selenium, I had just like email Selenium, I was like, could you put this on your resources? And it's right. I'm getting tons of like people that are going and buying Pluralsight subscriptions to watch the Selenium from there. Nice. So. Very yeah. nice. Also go to MongoDB themselves. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. a good idea. 
Yeah, that'll give you some link juice too if they link yeah. it too. Right. I gotta write this stuff down. Well, and it's all it's all current stuff, right? It's all recently made, so it's all current with the latest technology. So yeah, definitely. Their, their documentation gets out of date really fast. Yeah. yeah. So let's see. So I've got some stuff to port. So I'm back from uh, from the Nordic land. <laughs> yeah, welcome back. How was that? Uh, it was great. Uh, you know, it was my this was my first like really overseas trip, and Man, I, domestic flights are going to seem so short now. <laughs> uh, yep. It was I, I made I made I went through the very first one of the first things I did when I got home was I went through my workflowy list and I was like, okay, I need to track all the people that I met like and had conversations with, and I like I I made a list of all the people and then I put stars next to them if I considered them friends after this, like people that I had actually had serious conversations with and who would. And minus me. signs if you put in if they were enemies, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I actually met like uh, like 36 people, and like uh, probably a little more than half that list I would consider like friends now. So nice. it was huge, huge for making connections. Just um, and and a lot of good connections. It was funny when I started looking up some of these people afterwards. I was like, wow, I've been talking to a lot of PhDs. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, nice. I've, I uh, I met uh, the guy that 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 made the Toka hair salon game. He lives in Stockholm, Jack Nutting, um, and uh, he actually wrote an iOS book. I, that that is competing with my Google results for for my iOS course on Pluralsight. Nice. Um, I was able to like I finally met Jimmy Bogard. Yeah, uh, like <laughs> in person. Which he told me that when you went to Copenhagen, Derek, he said you didn't bring warm clothes. They had, he said they had to stop at a store <laughs> so you could buy warm clothes. <laughs> no, it was it was worse than that. I had plenty of warm clothing with me, but this was the night after the 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 conference party where I I unfortunately drank a little more than I should have, and I was panicked. <laughs> and lost your clothes. Out. No, I didn't lose. I was panicked <laughs> to get out the door and get to those guys in time uh, and didn't think to check the temperature. Yeah. And the temperature had dropped like 15 degrees overnight and stayed down there. So while I had plenty of clothing with me, it was all in my hotel room. Ah, uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I I drug Jimmy around this clothing store for like half an hour to <laughs> find warm clothing to to put on while we were walking around the city. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> I ended up. Uh, I met met Tim Thomas also. Nice. Uh, we walked around Copenhagen, me and Jimmy, Tim, and another guy. So that was that was pretty cool. I was like, it's funny. It's like, hey, you know, th like th this is the uh, you know Texas crowd right. apparently. Like, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> like, and everyone's worked to you know, and then in the track about connection, it's funny. Yeah. But um, yeah. Uh, it's a small world. Track about has hired like so many developers. <laughs> yeah, Tim worked at track about for like three months. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he works uh, worked with Jimmy for a couple of months, and you know, <laughs> I've I've had a lot of of dealings with Jimmy over the years from previous companies, and of course three Los Techies, and yeah. So yeah, so it's kind of cool. I got to meet Oren uh, or Ian Day. Uh, yeah. You know, oh gosh. Talk about um, I, I met like Rob. Me. What's that? Ian Day scares me. Yeah. <laughs> He's a smart guy, this guy. I think guy. I would run the other way if I <laughs> The dude is huge. I mean, like, physically huge. Oh, yeah. Like, you don't expect that. Him. But he's the nicest guy in the world when you actually yeah. sit down and talk to him. Yeah, yeah, he's a great guy. Um, I end up meeting like uh, Rob Eisenberg, and you know he's nice. working on the Angular stuff, mm -hmm. and that uh, we had yeah. some good conversations. I actually met, I uh, got to meet Dan North, and and he wants a copy wow. of my book. So. Nice. Um, Christian Heelman, like yep. um, a Glenn Block, finally. Like I've talked to him a lot online and stuff. Nice. So it was it was pretty cool to just you know to talk to all these people and to have really good conversations. I actually did uh, pretty much no drinking. Nice uh, over there because I was trying to stick to my uh, you right. know I st I stuck to the eating one meal a day, which everyone thought was a little crazy, but and and no <laughs> drinking. But uh, it was kind of a good challenge. Like it was good to talk to people without like. Sometimes we tend to use alcohol as a crutch, especially at conferences, to like right. break the ice. But I was just—I just forced myself. I was like, I'm gonna just every person I see, I'm just gonna talk to and strike up conversations. So it was a good, good exercise. Um, so that was, yeah. It, it ended up like connection-wise, it's gonna be really, really good. Um, all the sessions that I did went really well. 
I thought like I felt really confident in the in the in the sessions and and I even like the that the marketing yourself one uh, you know with the Swedish audience who's more reserved I was able to get them to come out of their shell a little bit and I had a lot yeah. of conversations afterwards so yeah it was it was pretty cool I I think uh, you know. Um, it was pretty neat to see the, the whole thing. We we went like one of the coolest story I'll, I'll I have from the whole thing is um, we went uh, like my second night there. We we went to this like Swedish, uh, not a bathhouse. It's like a sauna, right? And 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 they're like, yeah. So you know, we you go in the sauna, 180 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you jump in the Baltic Sea. <laughs> right? and they, they told me we were going to do this right and I was like yeah yeah this is funny yeah okay right I thought it was a joke nope. and, and, and so I brought my swimming trunks right because I thought okay well I need to have those and then my first shock was uh, yeah you won't really need those swimming trunks <laughs> okay so then we're like all like naked in the sauna and it's 180 degrees Fahrenheit yes that was not a lie either because normally saunas are not that hot but it's a but, dry heat, right? <laughs> until you're sweating, right? And then, <laughs> um, but then it's like, okay, now it's time to go into the pitch black, dark, cold ocean and jump in. <laughs> and I was like, all right, let's see a couple of people do it, and I I did it, and uh, it was it was actually not that but not that cold because you just came out of the heat. It was it was a it was a pretty uh, exhilarating experience. So it was nice. It was definitely. Definitely cool. So yeah, uh, very very good trip. Lots of lots of benefits I think that will come from it. So uh, very happy I did it. And and hopefully like the video for the meteor presentation I did was on online already. But the other two sessions were recorded. Um, and if hopefully the, there's no problem because once those are online, then that's going to be huge for getting into other conferences. Is to be able to now have video that I can say, look, this is me in front of a crowd, and I didn't right. like cower in the corner and stutter and <laughs> and, and cry. Like you did hide inside your coat though. So yes, yes, I did. You're totally looking like Bane in that man. <laughs> <laughs> so this is pretty interesting. Is it is it difficult for you to talk to people like that? Because I went to a conference a couple years ago, about a year and a half ago, and I was miserable the entire time because I like felt felt like I should be trying to talk to people and mm -hmm. I just could not force myself to do it. Like I did manage to force myself to approach Scott Hanselman and shake his hand. That was like the best that I was able to do the whole time, and pretty much the rest I didn't really connect with anybody. Well, there's there's a couple of things I think. Um, one of them is that just from doing podcasts and doing and doing speaking and you know. Mm -hmm doing get up and code and, and like all, all of that stuff and doing the Pluralsight videos, I, I've become a lot more like less self-conscious and especially doing YouTube videos. I think YouTube videos is the one thing that actually made the biggest impact because there you're just on the camera by yourself and right. you're like, like when you publish that thing, you're like, man, do I look like a, an idiot? <laughs> so at, at some point it, that kind of helped. So, so now like I actually really, really honestly don't care. Like if I talk to someone and they're like, you know, whatever, then it doesn't. So that kind of helped, I think. And then, um, and I also made a conscious effort. I was like, look, I'm just going to talk to people. Like, this is going to be um, cool. Um, and then also, just being in a foreign country, I think, with a lot of like, uh, it, it kind of banded people together more. Mm. So you kind of felt like you were part of a of a of a group, especially you know yeah. Americans that were there. Right. Um, and then also they had some activities and stuff. Like they they ran this conference or whatever extremely well because they made sure that there were social activities where you're kind of we all stayed in the same hotel. We were kind of um, you know had dinners together and 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 these type of things with, with all the speakers. So you could kind of felt like you could go up to speakers more and there wasn't like um, there was very little of a pecking order like it was a very diverse group of java.net PHP like all these different people so you didn't like some of the conferences I think it's like there's like a couple of like you know Mm. superstars and then everyone's kind of like totally. orbiting around them um, which makes things kind of awkward so so I think it was, it was a combination of, of several things but but uh, but I would just like in general advice for for a conference is, is I would say like just don't be afraid to just just go up and talk to people and I mean what's the worst that can happen is that they will like 
ignore you or laugh. Like it's 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 unlikely yeah. that that's going to happen because people are mostly at conferences because they want to have these kind of conversations and they want to mm -hmm. talk to people and and make connections. So yeah, I'm less I'm less like concerned about what people think about me and more just don't know how to approach people and what to say. So I I, need, I think I need a strategy for that. So concern. don't say anything. Just you know, find people, that, <laughs> well, just well, find people yeah. that are interesting but, that are having a conversation and mm -hmm. go listen. Yeah. And just just walk up to the group and start listening. You don't have to say anything. You know, eventually the conversation may turn a corner to where you actually have something to say, and then you can you can have some input. Can I start but, filming them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get all creepy about it. Just go like right up in their face and. But seriously, mm -hmm. that's, that's, not, that's a good yeah. That's the group and and start yeah. listening. That's the easiest way to get into the conversation, anyways, because you want to have some context and some background, and you want to make sure you understand what's going on. You know, ask a question if you don't understand something, and mm -hmm. just you know, yeah, you know, slowly begin to to work your way in. Yeah. One, I, one one other strategy that I use a lot is that. Um, if I go to a programming conference, I have something in common with everybody. Right. Yeah. If I go to a podcasting conference, um, I have something in common with everybody. Right. So you know, you can just ask them about whatever it is the conference is about. You know. Right. So what's your podcast or what's your blog? You know, at New Media Expo or, you know, at the programming conference. You know, hey, you know, I'm so and so, and I work on such and such. You know, and I'm, you know, I'm, I want to meet new people. I mean. For heaven's sake, you know, everybody want you know, just say it. You know, I want to meet new people, and I'm curious what you work on, or what, you know, what what really gets your engine going, or whatever. So yeah, yeah so I, I was actually I was in uh, uh, Seattle a couple of years ago doing some work uh, with Microsoft in Redmond, and I went I went in the guy that I was working with. We uh, crashed a party that we heard about. It was a video game expo, video game developers and whatnot. So we went and, and crashed the party, and we were just walking around talking to people and I was basically following his lead of just walking up to people and starting random conversations using that that exact technique yeah you know like saying hey I love video games what games are you playing and because it was a video game conference and we ended up meeting this guy this very random person that we hung out with most of the night and the guy was um, really interesting to talk to and a lot of fun to hang around and very, very, very outgoing. He would just walk up to groups of people at random, engage the conversation and become friends with everyone really quickly. So it was fun hanging out with him because he yeah. was doing all the legwork to get right. us into the conversations. Yeah. And I've always I've kind of having a good time. I've kind of like used people like that as a crutch a lot. Throughout right. my life, I was homeschooled, so I'm actually more comfortable. So I, I spent a lot of time with adults, uh, and more so than my peers. So I'm actually a lot more comfortable approaching a speaker than I am, you know, just having casual chit chat with, you know, with the guy sitting next to me. It's, mm -hmm. just, it's interesting. It's interesting flip flop for me. But yeah, like glomming onto somebody who, <laughs> who's really outgoing. That's how I, you know, that helped a lot in college. Yeah. The um the other thing that that reminded me too is I did a little bit of research too. I looked at the speakers and I saw what topics they were talking about and I kind of I went through the list several times and read so I could spot people and I could say hey uh, I either I attended your talk and I thought that was really cool and you know ask a question about something or hey you're speaking about uh, like Android uh, material design or whatever you know and then they, they, if you if you start a conversation by asking someone about something that they are interested in. They are going to light up most of the time because, like, most people want to tell you about themselves. Um, so if you start a conversation by asking someone about something they're interested in, they're gonna, they're most likely to open up and talk. Um, and then also, I mean, I think a lot of people too have this. Like, it's for most people, it's it's kind of weird. It's actually easier to get to get over the fear of speaking in front of a crowd than it is to speak in a small, like, two or three yes. person. That's actually a harder thing to to overcome, but um, but there's no reason why you cannot be like the guy that Derek described. Like that's, I, for, I was very very shy growing up as as a kid. Wouldn't even talk on the phone to someone. But then I started to just change my image. I was like, well, I could be the guy that goes and talks to everyone and 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 kind of it just makes conversations and makes things happen. Like I mean, it it, it takes a transition. But if you, I start getting that in my mind, I start believing I am that guy, and then 
you become what you believe that you are. So like there, there's really no reason like when you, you if you you know you have these mental barriers say I'm not that kind of person or, or whatever but if you go backwards you say really why aren't I like there's there's mm -hmm. absolutely no reason why you can't be that the connector type of, of person if you if you choose to be there's nothing like no defect in your personality or something that would that would hold you back it's just a matter of of choice so that's I mean these are you know just little little things that that might help but uh, but yeah I mean you kind of combine the things and see what works and 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 just you know over time I think it, it, it's it's something that 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 you can develop if you want to it's like working on anything you can work right. on it and develop it yeah. Just look what you've done with your 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 writing career in the last yep. couple of months. I mean, how many connections have you made through all of your your blog posts, through your giveaway stuff, through your mentor, through everything that you've done? I mean, you you clearly have the ability to go out and do this stuff. It's just it's it's really a matter of confidence more than anything. Quite yeah. frankly, I don't like talking with people that I don't know. When I'm I mean as much as I shoot my mouth off here on this on when we're talking here you put me in a crowd of people at a conference and I'm gonna be the quiet guy I don't like talking a lot when I'm around a bunch of people that I don't know it just makes me very uncomfortable but I I do exactly what I just told you to do I walk up to groups of people and I start listening and somebody might recognize me somebody might not it doesn't really matter to me I just start listening and I see if it's a conversation that I want to be involved in and you know, I start asking questions and offering opinions, and you know that's what I do at conferences, and it works for me. I like it. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna need to master that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you're making. I mean, obviously, like you, you've emailed and reached out to tons of people, yeah, like yeah. out of the blue now, and and hey, you're on this show. Like, I probably you probably <laughs> never thought you'd be like broadcasting yourself to <laughs> to thousands of well. Thousands of people, maybe, <laughs> um, well, you know, on a, on a podcast. So, yeah. so it's you know it's, it's progress. Plus now, I mean, and, and and the other thing that maybe in your specific case that might help you too is you're the guy that got like two hundred and seventy thousand yeah. email addresses from a contest. Like, yeah. I mean, depending on what conference you go to or something, like that's like a huge thing. And you're on Pat Flynn's blog as a guest poster, and like. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, Nathan Barry and all the I mean uh what what's his name the uh, uh Noah Kagan and mm -hmm. Absimo like you you've got kind of a like a an impressive like someone would want to talk to you for sure like you yes. know so. No, I just want to be you. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it helps to kind of hold that in your. I mean, not to be arrogant or anything, but so uh -huh. you, you've got a, enough. Like you, you don't have to have self doubt on whether or not someone would, you know, right. strike a, up a conversation with someone. You've got a lot to talk about, and 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 someone would want to have that conversation with you. So mm -hmm. this applies to literally anyone in, in yeah. any situation. I mean, I, I talk about this a lot in my blogging and on my mailing list. It's it's not a question of if you have something to talk about it's only a question of figuring out what it is that you know or want to know and then start talking it's I mean everybody has experience that nobody else has everybody has knowledge that nobody else has everybody knows something that the other people in the room don't know it's just it's just a matter of recognizing that and using doing something with it yeah, w one specific exercise too. I just thought about that. I did this a long time ago when I was a kid. When I stopped, actually, when I started with stop wanting to be shy. Uh, at first, it was I went to the mall one day. I made this exercise for myself, and I was like, I must talk to 50 people. <laughs> and I just started going to random people and just started having conversations with them because I had my quota. I had to reach my goal. And at first, it was really, really uncomfortable. But then it was like super easy and then I start I did a couple of sales things where I tried to like uh, try to I had these gumball machines and I was trying to get them in the store so I had to go and talk to all these people like any if you do any kind of direct sales or anything like that where you have to actually like that that will that's a huge like just if you're thinking about ways to train that that's that's how a lot of people train it is, mm -hmm. is to force yourself to have conversations with people you don't know because of either some kind of quota or so, you know some kind of regimen that forces you to do that Okay, making a note. Get into Amway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question, harking back a little bit to what John was saying earlier? Um, 
I'm, I'm wondering, you, you mentioned a whole bunch of people that you have in Workflowy that you've starred as people that you count as a friend or you had a conversation with. Do you have some kind of system for doing the follow-up? Because that's something that I really struggle with. You know, I don't have a good system. I, I was just thinking about this. I was like, I wonder if I should implement some kind of a system. I'm, I'm a little bit, like, hesitant to, to kind of systemize it to, to some degree because it because then it's like, um, you know, you're contacting people like, I don't know, I, I, I kind of feel like I want a natural growth, but 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 in my head, I, as I'm saying this, it sounds like an excuse, and like I should <laughs> have a system, and that would be a better way, like, to, to follow up on, maybe there's, maybe there's a schedule of maybe, like, these are the people you follow up on, like, uh, once a month, and these are the three months and the six months, just to touch base, mm -hmm. uh, but... Yeah. That's a good, good, um, good yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, like I don't have a formal system that I use, but one thing I do is if there's somebody that I want to get to know, I get on their mailing list. Now, this probably wouldn't be as applicable to programmers because a lot of them probably don't, you know, send out a lot of email. <laughs> right. I'd be comfortable <laughs> stalking Pat Flynn. That's fine. What's that? <laughs> I'd be comfortable stalking Pat Flynn. That's fine. <laughs> um, so I'll get on their email list, and then I will just kind of wait for an email that I particularly like, and I'll just respond to them. And I've done this with, uh, I, there's like three or four people at least that are pretty big, you know, relatively big names that I know who I, at least know who I am now mm -hmm. um, because I've been doing this. And uh, I think I've, I think I did that with Noah. Um, there were a couple, there have been a couple other people. Bob Bly is a copywriter um, that he's really, he's like one of the top copywriters and I, I've, I've liked his stuff. He's kind of like it has this grumpy old man persona, yeah. and uh, I kind of enjoy. Even though I'm not a grumpy old man yet, I kind of enjoy the get off my lawn attitude that he has. So, um, that's totally me. I, yeah, reach reach out to him regularly, and um, so you know, so that that way that it kind of comes to you. Um, the other option would be to do like do, you know actually have a, a like some kind of CRM tool or something that just pings you and says, oh, follow up with such and such, and. And and then just find a place like something that they they said on Twitter or a blog post they wrote um, and leave a comment. You know, just some kind of little touch. It doesn't have to be like, "Hey, I'm your pen pal now." <laughs> right. <laughs> or you can get totally scammy and start adding them to email lists and start oh, sending yeah. them email. Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> that always ends well. <laughs> <laughs> I really yeah, like that. I wonder if there's a tool that. I'm, I'm sure there's tools, because real estate agents use tools for that, but it's a little bit more, I think that's a little too mechanical, but maybe there's something a lighter tool that's... Yeah, I mean, I, I use, um, for friends, I have a, a, a tool called um, followup or followupthen.com that I just, I can email, send an email to the service, and then they'll send me an email back on a specific date. So, like, I have, you know, you know touch base with so-and-so, that I, it hits me every six weeks, and then I'll just you know shoot that person an email. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's not, that way it's not in my calendar. I don't like like stuff that's like this that's a, ta a task. I don't like to put it in my calendar usually, because it goes by and you don't do it, and then it's kind of like you know what just happened. Right. But so, I use uh, to, for that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. As a as a small throwback to my consulting days a few years ago, check out karmacrm.com. K a r m a c r m.com. Okay. It might be a little expensive. Starts at twenty bucks a month, which is kind of expensive if you're just doing this for for personal things. Um, but I, I I did some work with these guys uh, several years ago, and it's a really slick product. I really liked what they were doing. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that seems like that would be interesting. Oh, speaking of which, um, that just reminded me too. I wanted to mention this. Um, I started using uh, Edgar yesterday. Yeah, I don't know if you guys heard it. If you, Pat Flynn had an episode uh, about Ed, Edgar is it's sort of like a competitive buffer app. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Except the thing that I liked about it is it's um, it basically lets you schedule your con. So you you basically group your content into things like it, it fit perfectly to what I was doing already. So like categories like oh, blog posts. Mm -hmm. Like I've got category for blog posts, YouTube videos, um, inspirational quotes, and then there's another bucket for only for one timers. Mm -hmm. And so what it does is it lets you create this content uh, catalog for of social media stuff you want to send out, mm -hmm. and then it like randomizes it, 
and you can set uh, yes. the dates or the times when it sends it out. Mm. Um, but it gives you a backlog. So I, I started going through all my blog posts yesterday, and I was like, all, all the good ones I started adding to it, and then okay, all my YouTube videos. I have to outsource to someone. What's that? That would be a good task to outsource. <laughs> yes. oh, to, well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, it was, it was, it was like it, was, it would take more time to explain it than the hour right. it took me to do it. But um, but I filled it up, so I've got like something like three weeks worth of content. And as you fill it more and more, you can have like you know a couple yeah. of months worth of non-repeating stuff that's going to go out randomly on different channels. Nice. And then you can still have your one-time things that you you send out. Mm -hmm. But it's it's ingenious because like I always try to like. You know, I had my schedule. Okay, I need to send two old blog posts out every month, mm -hmm. and and this is or every week, and then this is like automatically doing that for me. And and so you're getting to reuse your content and fill up your your you know you're always sending out stuff. It doesn't matter that it's repeated like once every month or every two months because that's you know you you reach different people at different times. But I, right. I thought that was ingenious. Like it, I think it's like twenty bucks a month, but. Or it might even be more than that. It might, but but it's it seems like it's going to be worth doing because that's going to save me a, 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 at least an hour a week. Yeah, that's that's actually something I've been specifically looking for is that feature of of having a chunk of content that I just want repeated on whatever basis. Right. Yep. Buffer's that's nice. Awesome. Like just a a bucket to throw stuff in. Is it occurs to you? But I haven't found it to be that great. Um, actually, was talking to. Um, Wes and I are emailing back and forth about uh, how we're going to do the Twitter stuff for Sublime. I've been using an app called uh, Plugio, and mm -hmm. what that lets you do is you have a saved search, so like the the, the Sublime tag, text uh, hashtag mm -hmm. saved in there, and I'll just scroll through that, and you can click like uh, retweet, like basically, and it just adds it to a queue. Yep. Um, and Buffer doesn't. I don't think Buffer lets you do anything like that. Like it's you'd have to go. It'd be it, the workflow would be kind of clunky. You'd have to go find, find a tweet, and you could, there's probably a way to integrate Buffer with your Twitter timeline, but uh, it would be, it would be clunky. Right. Yeah, my Buffer strategy right now is at the beginning of the week, like on Monday, I spend one hour and I fill up four. I put 14 items in the Buffer, mm -hmm. and there's a certain mix. I have a checklist of like news articles and quotes and my blog posts and like one or two promotional items. Uh, but now this scheduling, I've got it set up with Edgar to to keep most of the you know the evergreen content re on a recycle. But like there's certain slots, I've got like two promotional slots every every week, and that's where my pitches go for nice. like my book or for yeah. my thing. So it's it's like I can control the ratio, and and most of it's on autopilot, and that's I just funny. add like some new stuff. So I mean, this is my first like week using it, but I. I think that I'm probably going to end up canceling my Buffer account and, and doing this. Nice. Okay. I have to check that out for sure. Yeah, it's definitely on my list too. Again, and Buffer, when I cancel my account, by the way, Derek, uh, I've paid for a year. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm pro, so. Nice. You're only screwing uh, yourself. Yes. No. Oh, no. <laughs> so what do you have going on, Josh? Uh, so I have been um, so the the King Sumo stuff is continuing to floor me. Um, I am I'm closing in on uh, on six thousand dollars in that since October. Gee. Wow, nice. And that's in, on top of the uh, so it's 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 probably close to like thirteen thousand now since I did the post on Pat Flynn's blog. Hold on, how much does your Sublime textbook make? Uh, about third, probably right around thirty thousand total. So you're you're gonna pass that. Yeah, I will pass that. <laughs> At the end of the definitely, year, <laughs> definitely pass that. Um, yeah. So uh, so I'm really happy with that. Um, the email 1K thing seemed like it did pretty well, and I got a bunch of I got a bunch definitely got a bunch of sales out of that. So it'll be cool to see um, to see that that you know that's they they're launching that. It seems like every few weeks or every week or something. So that should be a nice evergreen funnel of people. Yeah. Going through, and there have been there. It's what's been really cool is there have been people saying, oh, you know, like a lot of people saying, oh, I bought this, I did, I did this contest, and here's what happened, and giving some testimonials. So I'm reaching out to them. I'm going to get them to. I'm going to interview them and then use them for email fodder. Uh, one one guy did a. Uh, this was really cool. He did a business to business giveaway. Oh, nice. he runs a Facebook advertising business, so he did a giveaway for Facebook advertising credit. And he got like a hundred. It wasn't like a ton, but it was like 
for business to business, it was really good. It was like 150 um, contacts or something, and several people that he looks like he's going to be working with. So he, you know, he got himself some nice business there just for yes. 100 bucks worth of Facebook credit. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. So yeah. So um, yeah. So, so a bunch of people have got, given me some good good feedback. Um, so I am working on. I'm doing. I'm put, starting to put together an autoresponder sequence. That's going to be um, ten ten emails that'll go out over a 30 day period, and I'm going to turn this into a funnel basically to kind of replicate with the, the email 1K thing. I want to. I want to have my own sequence that I send people through that I can pay for traffic for. So I'm going to have like it's going to be a five day course, um, and then like a few follow up emails after that. And uh, the first one, the first email that goes out, I just wrote that this morning, and it's like basically me pouring my heart heart out about how, you know, how it is hard it is to get traction blogging, especially in small niches, because um, you know, in in I thought that I was going to be able to just you know write blog posts to throw them up on Hacker News and get tons of traffic, <laughs> um, and with Sublime, there's like you know a few big questions that a lot of people have have, and then everything else is long tail. And you'll get like you know you know three three hits a day on some blog post you spent weeks and weeks or no, it was spent hours on. Um, so I kind of you know walked through this and then I talked about how I discovered giveaways and that's really how I built my email list because um, I did two of them before the big one and then I did you know the huge one um, and then I'm gonna do a do a five day course about pitfalls and how to set the thing up and everything and then you know give them a good solid pitch for the King Sumo plugin at the end, and then hit them with a bunch of success stories afterwards. So uh, I think I think that'll convert pretty well. Like right now, I'm getting it seems like about eighty, close to seventy five or eighty percent of people who get my you know the email that says here's your discount code, actually click the link and wow. go to the King Sumo page. And then my conversion rate there is right around. 35 to 38 percent. Like it's wow. So yeah. High. So well, th those are highly qualified, right? Like they've yeah, right. been filtered through, like you know, how many? Who knows how many people hit Pat Flynn's blog post? Um, and then you know, a fraction of them click through, and then another, you know, it's it's they're pretty filtered. Um, so I think that number will go down, but that's high enough that if I could even get five percent of, if I could get a four percent conversion rate on Twitter traffic, where I'm getting you know, sign ups for two bucks. I could make a pro, or I'd be breaking even. So anything higher than that, and I'm making a profit. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I think I can do. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set the sequence up, and then I'm going to uh, basically um, just buy Twitter ads and send people through it for a little while. If that works, I think I'm gonna hire somebody to run Facebook and Twitter advertising for me, so I don't have to think about it. And then it's totally on autopilot. I pay somebody 500 bucks a month, pay Twitter. And then you know I'm done. So yeah, so this could be a really good. <laughs> we'll see how it scales up, but the numbers look pretty good. So um, I think the the story that I have is compelling enough um, that it does a really good job of selling selling the product, and it's a good product, and it really works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I'm gonna try to get that all put together this by this weekend. Uh, I have a lull here in my my uh, internship writing. I haven't had any new assignments for a while, so um, hoping he's probably going to slam me again. <laughs> but what, what typically happens is like he's like you know he's got all these clients he's juggling, so I won't hear anything for a while, and then he'll be like he'll, we use uh, team team teamwork um, dot com, so I'll get like an email from teamwork. I'm like oh an assignment, then I'll get another email from teamwork and another email from teamwork, and I'll go in and I'll look at them, and they're all due on the same day, and all that day is like three days from now, and I'm like. No, can't do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm gonna get that done hopefully this weekend, and then um, yeah, that's um, that's really my focus right now. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start running some experiments too, where I like try to this this will probably come after I get the sequence done, but I want to try to like run a giveaway using only paid traffic and see what happens. So yeah. Can I can I build can I do anything useful with that that I could teach you know. Because um, if you have zero subscribers, but you could pay three hundred dollars for Twitter ads and get five hundred subscribers, that's you know that's pretty good. So um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else going on. Not really. It's been a short week for us, so. <laughs> but yeah, pretty excited about this. Um, I've got I'm talking to somebody else today a little bit later about 
another interview for me. So, and I'm going to be uh, interviewing Craig also about his his giveaway. Um, nice. Yeah, he got he had some pretty darn good results, and he also was very creative in how he approached people and got them to promote his contest. So, that's I'm having a hard time. Actually, that's something I can throw out there. I'm having a hard time like coming up with creative ways of um, telling like what what can I tell my readers about how could they approach other people about promoting their contest and make it a win-win. Like I'm having a hard time coming up with that. Um, if you guys have any ideas, awesome. If not, then we'll just let the silence drag on awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward silence from me. Yeah, we could talk about it on the mailing list, but yeah, it's it's tough because um, if somebody's already got an audience, I don't like. I'm trying to think like what could I offer somebody who has a big audience that I'd like to tap into aside from cash. Ca cash always works. So listen to the last episode of Startups for the Rest of Us. Okay. Uh, th he was they were t they had a a guy on that was doing webinars. Okay. And and he was I mean it's very similar like if you think about it, but he was mm -hmm. getting people to let to uh to send to their email list a joint webinar, or he was actually mm -hmm. doing the webinar, but he was getting them to to promote his webinar on right. their list, and and he was basically, you know, he he had some pretty good advice on on the topic on on how okay. to how to do that. I think that was I, I think he was just trying to figure out like what what would benefit them, which is if you're producing something of high quality of content to their to their readers, plus they're gonna uh, uh, get. Uh, you know, they they might have some kind of commission from the from the mm -hmm. thing. You know, so, something that would appeal to them that that it's that you, if as long as you're delivering something that's going to be of high quality is what what he's kind of really really bringing it to, then then it's going to be value to them because it's value to their audience. Yeah, but but he also with Brendan Dunn. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay, Brendan Dunn. Yeah. Yep. Um, yes. But that sounds like a similar vein. But but he also had made a point about um, similar size audiences. Like you can't really like bat up the chain too much. Mm -hmm. Like so, right. if you have you have to connect with people that are kind of parallel to to you, yeah. which I think that's that probably makes sense because when you think about it, it's like if most people that have about the same subscriber, you know, you know, the same reputation in the industry approach me to do joint promotions, I'm much more likely than someone who's just starting out. I'm I'm like, well, I don't have much to benefit from you. You yeah. have a lot to benefit from me. Um, and then like for me to try to reach up to someone that's way up the chain, I have to offer them a very very high value. Otherwise, they're going to look and they're going to say, mm -hmm. well, you know, I don't want to take a risk on you because right. you know, you, your your reputation is not enough that that would matter to me. Yeah. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, one thing that occurs to me too is that uh, you're very good at some things that I'm not, and so you know, you helping me out with some of the stuff that I struggle with, you know, in exchange for you know, can I get people from your audience to come and pay attention to what I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know, is probably something that I'd consider. You know, yeah. it would have to uh, the standards that I have for my own content, but like that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. So like an in-kind or you know, yeah, mm -hmm. kind of yeah. Mm -hmm. I suppose yeah. real-world help. <laughs> yeah, like in your specific case, you've got like the copywriting chops and the email sequence autoresponder, which I mean, you can mm -hmm. I mean, you could probably work that in somehow that right. you're you know through that you're you're setting up an autoresponder or something that they'll be able yeah. to utilize in the future or something like right. that. Right. Yeah, part of this is an experiment too, just like cuz I'm going to do my own I'm going to do my own giveaways and I actually think that my I've been thinking about it. I think my email list, especially if I if I get this paid traffic funnel going, um I think it's going to grow pretty fast. Um I think I'll have, you know, th several thousand subscribers in the next few months, but um you know, I'm just trying to think about this almost as like an experiment for my audience like if I didn't have that what what would I do? And, mm -hmm. Yeah. But. This is a good example too, like of your. I think I forget. Maybe it's the physical guys that were talking about this. This kind of like randomness of the, of like of what becomes successful makes you successful. Mm -hmm. Like that you kind of yeah. have to have this big luck component. So like you had no idea that doing yeah. this contest would be the thing that would actually grow your business or make a business for you more than anything else. Right. But well, you I kept on that it going up to bad. Business for me. But not in the way that it seems like it is. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was going to be, you know, oh, I can sell my books now, and you know, that's going to be helpful. Like there will be a component of that, but I think 
this has given me like a, a ledge to stand on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there is, and it's it's always frustrating. Like, um, this is actually one thing I've I've emailed back and forth with uh, Bob Bly about. But people like what tends to happen is people tend to take, and I, I want to be very careful about this because I'm in the same position. But people take uh, something that happens to them that has a big component of luck, and then they try to teach it as a system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, it's not repeatable. Like, no one. I'm I'm not trying to tell anyone that they're going to make you know get two hundred thousand email subscribers because you know, that's like a fluke. And I could probably, I might be able to do it again now that I have, you know, 80,000 80, plus people on my mailing list. But, you know, I could see that, you know, go back and send that email out on a different day. It might have never happened. You yeah. know, it's, there's definitely a, a chance component to it. Um, and it just really irks me when people try to sell that as, that's just why I've been so encouraged to see a lot of other people having success, a, yeah. good success with it too. Yeah, I feel much better promoting it that way. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Seth Godin's Purple Cow, he talks about that a lot, like how someone, it works for someone, and mm-hmm. then all these other people follow along, and what they don't realize was that that person had the Purple Cow, because they mm-hmm. were the first person to do it, mm-hmm. so right. they innovated, and so that was their advantage. They were unique right. in the market. They were doing something different than everyone else, so then when everyone else starts doing it, that doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't. Right. It, 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 right. it being unique is the thing that that makes it work sometimes. Yeah. And, and I think I think you had a bit of an element of that too, is because you're like one of the first people that you know. The, the, as audiences start to see more contests and stuff, it'll become more saturated. It won't have right. as much of an of an effect. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you just never know, like when what uh, what activity <laughs> is going to actually give you the breakthrough. It's amazing. Yep. That's exciting. I'm excited to see where you wind up. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> but it's moving. The, tra- the freight train is moving. <laughs> so how about you? Uh, we, I guess we better get this out of the way real quick. Do you prefer to be called Charles or Chuck? You guys can call me Chuck. Okay. In fact, all of my listeners, you're all my friends. You can call me Chuck, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Chuck, how's it, how, how's it going in your world? Uh, pretty good. I've been uh, kind of killing myself to get the JS Remote Conf website up. Mm-hmm. Um, it's up now. Um, I've actually we we got the registrations done yesterday morning ish, and uh, I've already had two people sign up without really pushing. Hey, it's up. Nice. Um, uh, one of them was a users group, and the other was a regular um, a single attendee, and so. Um, yeah, so the site's been up. It's not quite done, but it's been up for about a day, and it's already brought in five hundred and fifty dollars. Wow! Nice. <laughs> what's the what's the address? It's jsremoteconf.com. I'll put it in the chat here. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so I'm I'm finalizing some of the big name speakers, and then I'll have a section in there for that. And I need to get a section in here for the call for proposals. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's coming along pretty nicely. This design is pretty nice. Yeah, this is really nice looking. <laughs> Where did so, you get this design? How did 99 you... designs. Really? Nice. Yes. How much did you end up paying total for it? 99? Uh, <laughs> 1500 I think. Okay. Nice. Uh, it's, yeah. It's, totally it worth it. Yeah, totally worth the price. for. Yeah. I just wanted something that really looked slick. Yeah. Um, I do need to clean up the, the copy on the about. Um, I've had somebody helping me and he basically said, well, I can't style the about until I know what you're going to put in there, so I just kind of right. wrote something. Yeah. Uh, so I need to clean it up. Um, I'll probably ping you, Josh, at some point and ask for your opinion. Okay. But uh, well, That's probably after I, uh, I kind of thin this out a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, uh, one thing real quick, I would definitely go with one column. Mm-hmm. Versus For the about, two. yeah. Um, I mean, it's okay. It's okay down here with the sign up section to go multi column, but I would say to go one column. The font's a little small for me too. Yeah. So it's okay. not. I'm, it's not formatted. I didn't realize that, but yeah. Generally, generally, like readability is uh, is much better if you've got if you've got just one column. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think the sign up makes sense with two columns because there are two offerings. Right. Yep. I just blasted it out to the social networks. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no, that's good. 
Uh, yeah. But but yeah, so the idea was you know having a, a highly accessible conference experience, so nobody has to travel or pay a lot of money or any of that kind of stuff. And we're doing it in the evening, so they don't even have to take off work. They don't have to go beg their boss to let them off. But anyway, so that's one thing that I've got going on that I'm really excited about. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll we'll get the rest of the pieces in place, but. Um, yeah, I think by announcing it to JavaScript Jabber and things like that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I should get some traffic. The, the, the other thing that I'm struggling a little bit with with my um, podcasts is that I would like to start building the email lists out, mm -hmm. and I haven't had a lot of luck with that. Um, if you go to devchat.tv or javascriptjabber.com, for example, okay. um, and you look at the page, it has the button to sign up for the mailing list, or get the newsletter or whatever, mailing list. Okay. Um, do I need to do something different to make that a little bit more explicit or make it bigger? Or Yeah, it, it I, I just hit javascriptjava.com, which you know took me to the devchat.tv site, and I had to actively look for the mailing list sign up. Yeah. Okay. It was really hard for me to see it because mm -hmm. I, was, I, I wasn't expecting it to be where it is, and it looked like another RSS subscribe button. Okay. Yeah, I would put the form. Somewhere. Yeah, that's what people put the form in there. Yeah, right. yeah, put the form and make it real obvious. Um, what's so? What's the goal with the uh, with the podcast um, mailing lists? Like, how do you want to use them? Have you thought much about that or? So, in particular, with the JavaScript communities and the Ruby community. Um, to some extent, the freelancing community. I have product ideas that I'd like to put out there. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing is is that my, kind of my overarching mission with everything is to enable people to, to make, it, make their lives better. So, you know, better career, better life, better, you know, job, whatever, you know. So whether it's picking up skills that allow them to move up in career or whether it's, you know, teaching them how to cope with a bad boss or anything like that, you know, I like to be able to do that. And I think the, the podcasts reach out to people in a particular way and help them with that. But I'd like to be able to kind of have that high touch, mm -hmm. um, you know, solid relationship with people so that I can reach out to them and help them out. And then if I do put something out, you know, some video or webinar or, uh, you know, some other thing or with the Ruby in particular, you know, I can remind them to go check out Rails clips periodically. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, or, you know, to have them go check out Ruby Tapas for Avdi or... You know, somebody else on the show comes out with a product, you know, you know, send them over there. Somebody on the show is working on stuff. So, I mean, there's that angle on it, too. But, um, you know, it's all going to be content that helps them along that path. Right. And I feel like email is the probably one of the best ways to engage people that way and find out what they're struggling with and then give them the tools to deal with whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So it's sort of it sounds like it's sort of a dual purpose. Then it would be some of it would be specifically related to the 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 content that got them to sign up. Mm -hmm. Like Ruby Rogues, they would sign up and they'd get content about the show. They'd get content about Ruby. But then you also probably will bring in some stuff that's more general, kind of introduce mm -hmm. them to yeah to more you like your brand. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it's funny. I was just about to say. I, I just listened to a podcast, and, and they had this guy on there, and he was talking about using text messages, and then I realized I it, was it was your mine. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, 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 Greg Hickman is super cool. Yeah, that seemed like a good, a good strategy that, that you could definitely utilize, and then, uh, and then I would probably give something away, I, and, and I might have a pop-up come when someone clicks on an episode, um, I was thinking because then they're definitely interested in, I, I don't know, you kind of have to figure out like why would someone want to subscribe to an email list for a podcast? Uh, maybe one appeal would be to get the transcripts emailed to them directly after every show. Um, mm. that, that could definitely be appeal. Yeah. Or maybe like the best of JavaScript Java or, or maybe, I mean, you could definitely give away some kind of like small ebook that had mm -hmm. like, so, you know, some of the collections of, of things. Yeah. You um, guys so have some kind of lead magnet. You guys yeah. have picks, right? And those are really popular, so you could probably oh, yeah. get off of those. Oh, yeah. That's you true. Know, compile those or, like, do a reader favorites or... Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, one thing that I've uh, considered, so if you click on it, there are two check boxes, and one is I want useful tips and tricks, and the other one is I want to be alerted when a new episode comes out. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, uh, one thing I would do with that is I wouldn't put that option there. Um, mm-hmm. What I would do is I'd make the form as simple and easy to sign up as possible. Just ask for their email address and and maybe the first name. I I, I kind of go back and forth on this, but I if you just the email address, yeah, maybe yeah. just capture the email address and then the first email you send them says has the the option to check. Right. Oh, I, you know, here, welcome to the list. But would you just want if you just want this, then mm-hmm. you know, and, and give them the option right there, and then possibly even say, and by the way, if you want to fill out your name or you know, um, mm-hmm. this way the friction is very very small, right. so they can just immediately sign up. And then you can still capture that information, or if they want to, it, it's more like like you double opt, you opt them into both, and then if they want to opt out of one, you could give them that option through the email instead of having them make a decision. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah, Drip actually makes that sort of thing super easy. Like you can do one option there is you can have just have a link that they could click that uh, in the email that mm-hmm. versus sending them to some other form or something on Mailchimp. You, they just click the link and they're added to this other sequence, and now they get, you know, podcast yeah. notes or whatever. I yeah. have uh, Entreport, and it does the same thing. Oh, you have Entreport. Okay, yeah, exactly. Wow, <laughs> you went right for the uh, the heavy hitter tool there, didn't you? <laughs> I, I did, and there are things I like about it and things that I don't. Yeah. So I used Entreport for a while. So if we get into later, get into uh, me helping you with some of that stuff, I can definitely help you out. Oh, cool. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I liked it. Um, the user interface is fairly clunky. Um, the main reason I went off of it, though, was just because I was going to be spending, like, $900 a month or more for my huge Sublime list. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I was just... Because it was, like... Well, and it was really... Pain, it was, their pricing structure was awful for me because it was, like, you get, like, 100,000 subscribers or something. Or you get, like, 50,000 subscribers for your 300 bucks a month. And then if you want... More subscribers, it's like another hundred dollars a month for every fifty thousand or whatever. And then, if you want to actually send them emails, they would charge you even more. So oh, it's interesting. Going to be close to a thousand dollars a month for me. Yeah, see, I think mine's just a fixed cost per month. Yeah, yeah, you're probably paying the base three hundred or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, there. So the things that I like about it, you know. Um, I need to go in and actually systematize or systemize or whatever the word is a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And what I think I'm probably going to do is just put people on sequences that remind me to reach out to them at whatever frequency. I really liked that when uh, John was talking about it. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, I have the sequences for the different mailing lists. And um, so, you know, so there, that we've got that going on too. But... Um, Anyway, the, the user interface, it, they updated it. They forced you over to Entreport instead of Office Autopilot, which is where I started. Okay. And uh, so the user interface is a little bit better, but I have had some issues with it. Mm-hmm. The the barrier I have to moving off of it is that all of my forum signups have gone through yeah. Office Autopilot. And it, yes. it does all of the recurring billing for that. And so to move oh, off okay. of it, I would okay. have to get people to sign up again. Right. And yes. I don't know if I want to deal with that. So. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, there's really no reason to move off of it unless you're unhappy because it's pretty powerful. I mean, yeah. that, you know, um, Drip does not have some of the fe- a lot of the features that Office or that Entreport does. Um, it do- you know, it, some of it, like most of those features I don't need. Um, but, yeah, Entreport is really like Infusionsoft is the other one, mm-hmm. even a little bit more powerful than Entreport, I think. But, um yeah, the main thing I, the main thing that I would like to have that Drip does not have is um, A/B testing within of emails within a sequence, and then um, also uh, like lead scoring where you can kind of send people less email if they're less interested in hearing from you, mm-hmm. so not just mm-hmm. blasting everyone all the time. But yeah, yeah. Cool. So anyway, so those are great tips. I think I'm probably going to do that. What I may do is if you look at the page. Um, you have the title, and then underneath JavaScript Jabber, there's there's a space for like a description of the show. But what I may do is I may just make the subscribe button a little bit wider, and then put the mailing list underneath it. Yeah, the mailing list form. And I would say too, like if someone clicks on one of the shows that like you 
you you know popping up an email captures mm -hmm. it's probably like maybe after a couple of seconds is it's probably acceptable because that's a real interest in and in, you know you're offering something that's really has a high interest level to so. yeah and you yeah, can play with you can the problem with, I have is that I find them exceptionally annoying when they happen <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah they could, yeah. there there are ways around that though you don't have to use the big freaking modals that that yeah. everybody uses these days there there's the little ones that pop up in the bottom corner oh, okay or you could you could even use just a, a plain form like I just clicked on you know episode 133 and there's a lot of space toward the top here that would be really easy like you, you have the the episode player with the play in new window and download episode it, right below that in between or maybe right below the panel list or something just above the the discussion and the picks have you know a, a, just an embedded form like sign up to get updates on new episodes oh kind of yeah. right there in the middle of the content you know close to where people want to be in the content anyways mm -hmm. but not like a pop up not yeah. not annoying it's just there and people can do it that yeah, makes and it's sense. a little bit it's it's noticeable unlike right. the, but it's not so intrusive that it feels like it's yeah yeah like when when we first started up this group Josh and John told me to put an email sign up form at the very bottom of my blog posts on Los Techies just immediately after the content right below it and I did that and my su subscriber rate like tripled just by yeah. moving where the the sign up location was yeah and it yeah, wasn't I, annoying, it wasn't in the way, it was just there and people started using it. Yeah, I could do that too. I mean, just put it right before the comments too, the same right. form. You know who's done a really good job of this is um, uh, one of my fellow Email 1K authors, <laughs> uh, James Clear. Uh, JamesClear.com has done an awesome job at this where he, he's got his whole site is geared towards capturing emails, but he does it in a very unobtrusive way. And uh, his site is really like it almost looks like Instapaper, like it's really yeah. clean, really readable, you know, not a, no visual clutter and nothing like in your face. But he's collected, he's he's collected more than a hundred oh, yeah. thousand like email that. addresses. He's, he's got also an annoying pop up. Oh, does he? Okay. Yeah, well, does. When I, when I mouse over the um, is it a, menu bar at the top? For okay, pops. it might be an exit pop. -up. No, oh, I, I was I was scrolling up and down the page and yeah. it showed up. Okay, all right. Uh, he did not have that <laughs> uh, until recently. He he's he's experimented with it. He told me off and on, but um, yeah. yeah, he's got like nine. I think he has like nine different places where you can sign up for right. a mailing list on his site. It's pretty. He's got he's done a good job with it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering also the other point that you might consider is I don't know though I'm like it might be worth playing around with like is this subscribe to podcast maybe that like ask an email address and then it shows the RSS or maybe like you get the email address Ooh, and it's like okay. I'll send you the information right and then your first email you send them immediately has the RSS feed and the mm -hmm. because because you kind of want to push people down the path of if they want to subscribe to the podcast of doing it via email all you know and then and then they can choose their RSS reader but if they're I think most people might say well if I'm subscribed to the podcast in iTunes or RSS or Stitcher then do I really need to send it for the mailing list as well whereas you might be able to force a decision if you I mean you have to kind of be delicate because you might tick people off they're like I just want the RSS feed but maybe if you can make a justification so when they click and say oh give me your email address because I want to send you more than just the RSS feed I want to give you mm -hmm. transcripts or you know something of value I'll, I'll and then you know in the very immediately as soon as you give me your email address you'll you'll get the links for RSS and and, and whatnot but that that might be something to at least experiment with and see I don't know I, for one, uh, listen to more podcast episodes via email subscription than anything else. I've got a ton of subscriptions in my iTunes, hmm. but I, I'm, I'm so dang busy and scatterbrained. The ones that I listen to the most often are the ones that get emailed to me. Hmm. Interesting. That's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't have, I have a bunch of podcast subscriptions and don't listen to any of them anywhere other than on my phone. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. Uh, they're all in downcast on my phone. and Yeah, that's on mine. Yeah, yeah. I've thought about turning on, uh, turning off 
part of my blog because I don't want people consuming it through RSS. I want them on my email list and getting right. it, uh, which is tough because then some people are like, well, but I want RSS. So yeah. I, I think maybe just making it harder to find the RSS or putting the RSS behind the email might might be the, the kind of solution. Yeah, the, the tricky thing there is that, like RSS for a blog, you, you can still usually go to the blog and consume the content. Right. RSS for a podcast is the lifeblood of your podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but the, the same yeah. thing is, is that, you know, I'm having kind of gut reactions to some of these things, but what I really do need to do is experiment with them and see what actually right. makes sense, what works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, something kind of cool that someone showed me. Uh, do a Google search for developer podcasts or for programming podcasts, um, any term you could think of. Um, I'm pretty much hitting number one on all of those. You suck. Wow, you are. Or um, I pulled up, I pulled up a, a Google a Chrome incognito window, searched nice. for developer podcast. The ultimate list of developer podcasts at simpleprogrammer.com. Nice. Okay, you unsuck because I bet some of my shows are on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I think I should have pretty much all your shows on there. If, yeah, I don't. So. Yeah. if I don't have one of them, let me know and I will definitely put it on there. But the only one I might not have is Angular. I need to get that one. That one I think yeah. is newer. But. I don't see um, it's under I or under mobile either. Which one? The iFreaks? Yeah. Okay, I'll add that one as well. Let me put that on my to-do list here. Yeah, I listened to I listened to a lot of when I was looking for good programming podcasts. I listened to a lot of them. Ended up unsubscribing from almost all of them, checking stuff for your stuff because you're <laughs> actually like interesting and yeah. Call it, I'm causing brain damage all over the internet. People. <laughs> <laughs> But but yeah yeah that makes sense that's really interesting and I'd I'd love to know you know some of the things you did to actually rank for that because not what that if, I'm gonna try and knock you off but just that <laughs> you know. well one of the things tell me all the sites where you uh, link post from uh, I, I think there's a couple of things I mean one I found a Stack Overflow question asking about podcast and it was way out of date so I like my, I edited it and added mine oh, to there you go. My, my post. <laughs> Um, and then the other thing was like there was like there was crap search results. There was just crap. Like it was yeah. like old, outdated stuff. Mm -hmm. And so um, so I posted that out there. And then I think there's a couple of things that are happening. I think a lot of people are linking to it because they're yep. like, hey, this is an updated yeah. list. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I think that's what's happening. I think also Google is 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 taking into consideration um, how much it shows up and how much it's the first thing that's clicked. Because when you right. look at the other search results, you when it was in position five or six, you would click that first because it, it looks like the most legit one. And so I think that that's influencing the ranking right. factor a, a lot. But it just, I mean, it started creeping up and creeping up, and I haven't really done a huge amount of stuff. I, I see it tweeted, uh, you know, fairly often that people are 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 saying this is yeah. where the, the list is. But this is a great example of the successful use of that skyscraper technique that we talked about with where you find something that's crap or you know, it's okay or crappy and you do do it better. Something yeah. gets shared a lot that's not great and then do it better and you know, this is what happens if, if you're you know if it if it all works out. Yeah, yeah, and it, it turned out to be like I also utilized it because I put the shows that I'm on first at the top <laughs> of that thing. So it's like it works as a good promotion for, and and it's totally legit in that case because hey, if I'm the one making the blog post, there's no reason why I wouldn't highlight the the episodes that I'm on, right? Which uh, which is is helped. But I've been getting a, a ton of traffic from that that page, which is pretty cool. Awesome. I, I'd like to actually make the page more robust and make it like a sortable list, like an actual, almost like an app itself, like an almost a website itself, mm -hmm. uh, and then and then possibly figure out some way to monetize off of that because it should be like if it's an ultimate resource, there's probably some. Here way are the first five. Opt into my email list and buy my course, and I'll give you the rest of them. <laughs> yeah. I have to say there are a bunch of good shows on here, so. I was actually on .NET Rocks. Um, yeah, somehow I ended up on .NET Rocks a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, I had dinner at, uh, I think it was Rick Campbell's house. Nice. Oh, with, nice. Uh, a bunch of speakers from the conference I was at at the time up in Vancouver. Yeah. Anyway. 
So yeah, so uh, thanks for all of your advice. I actually have to jump off in about five minutes because I have another show lined up. But yeah. okay, <laughs> we're about to wrap up here anyway. So. Right, right. You should ensure your voice, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be scared if you lose that. <laughs> oh man, I, I lost my voice a couple weeks ago. I had a cold. I was rasping yeah. into the microphone. It was pretty yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I guess uh, so. Next time, we'll regular time Friday at the. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We also need to talk about. We have um, Chuck. You don't know about this yet, I don't think, but we have our uh, right. challenge coming up, where we're we're basically all gonna take a. I'm taking a day off. We're all taking a day, and we're gonna work on something for Derek. So something right. related to Derek's stuff. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we have. It's it's at the twenty. It's the twenty first, right? Twenty first. Yeah, Friday, Friday the twenty first. So yeah. Oh, for some reason I was thinking it was this Friday, but no, next Friday. Oh yeah. But yeah, I mean we've been planning this for a while, so if it totally doesn't work in your schedule, that's not a big deal. I'll have to look. Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, and then what is the timeline, just real quick on that? Like, are we doing that into the eve? Are we are we doing a 24 hour thing? Or are we doing just like a work day? Uh, I mean, I, I was. I I was thinking more than a work day, but not 24 hours. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking too. Like, start early, like, you right. know, like. So I'm I'm gonna have to get my kids ready for school. I'm gonna have to um, get them ready for bed. You know, probably help with dinner a little bit. But I'll have you know, 10 to 12 hours that I can spend that day doing whatever. Yeah. Is there anything specific that we're doing, or just? We need to plan. Yeah, we got to we'll, – we'll, let's do that on the mailing list. Yeah. Yeah, probably, Derek, you should probably come up with, like, how you can utilize us best like, right. so you I get have, done what you want done. I have lots of ideas of things to do, so. Cool. cool. Yeah, that'll be fun. All right. All right, guys. Talk Thanks to you up. next time. See right. ya. See ya. Later. Wanna start a business but you just know how to code Listen to the entrepreneurs and we'll teach you straight up to be developing yours